Welcome to Alberta Impact. I'm your host, Bryce Lambert. Tonight, we're exploring Alberta's opportunities, growth, focus, and how companies can benefit from economic development. Joining me is Robert Fernandez, Director of Economic Diver Diversification at Parkland County. Robert, thank you for joining us. Thanks for having me, Bryce. Absolutely. So there is some massive things happening over there in Parkland County. You guys are growing like crazy, and you're really offering some really cool opportunities for a lot of newer businesses and more established businesses, and you're really bringing some you know, uh, attention to you, you, you guys' selves, which is super awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about what's going on over there? Well, I mean, uh, Parkland County is, um, I describe it to uh, investors and, and, and companies who want to set up that are not from here. Uh, as big as Luxembourg. Yeah. Uh, we're a big, big piece of land uh, all the way from uh, the western edge of Edmonton uh, out to uh, Entwistle and uh, 2,400 square kilometers and um, uh, there's a lot going on. So we have a very, very vibrant uh, uh, area in our Etchens and Industrial Park, uh, which uh, in itself is almost 30 or over 30 years old, but has seen tremendous growth and tremendous development uh, just over the last uh, decade, even five years, mm. and uh, it's buzzing. I mean, you, you, you're driving through that industrial park, which is uh, 12,000 acres, if you, you know, add up all the land there. Uh, there are no vacancy signs. I mean, there's, there's opportunities, there are things for sale, um, uh, you know, for new investment and for new uh, um, entrepreneurs, but uh, it's, it's, it's busy. There's, there's a lot of activity, so... Um, yeah, that is one of the, the active areas, but happy to talk about all the others. That's super cool. And your model, Open for Business, which Absolutely. is a really great model. Yeah. And, uh, I mean, you can't spell it out any plainer than that. You're uh, ready to rock and roll. Well, very, very, very simply put, uh, as a county, um, what we can do is provide opportunities, remove barriers, uh, be open to entrepreneurs, um, help um, citizens, investors, and, 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 uh, and, and company owners to create opportunities uh, and, and make that as flawless and as, as easy to them as possible. Our job is to promote development uh, in, an, in an obviously orderly way, mm -hmm. uh, but promoting it and not, not hindering it. Um, and that is what we do. So, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, we, we're open for business. And, and, and that's, like that. that's a great thing now because, I mean, we are talking about going into a difficult market right now. Absolutely. And, uh, and providing opportunities like that. And, and you've kind of touched base on just how Parkland is looking to provide those opportunities in a difficult market, yeah. which is huge. So, yeah. yeah. And, and how about some of the focus areas? What are some of the areas that you guys are really looking to, uh, you know, put a, put a spotlight on? Right. So a couple of things. I mean, talking about regions maybe uh, within the county, uh, Atchison, obviously, Industrial Park, there, there is a focus on, on the older, more established uh, side of, of the Industrial Park, what uh, the, the locals know as Zone 3. Okay. Uh, we will be uh, doing um, some programming and, uh, and, and content in, uh, in terms of business retention and expansion strategies. Just to give you one example, there are so many programs and so many um, activities and initiatives available on a on a regional basis here in Edmonton but also on a provincial basis on a national basis export um, programs credits uh, schooling um, all kind of activities and uh, most companies don't know about that yeah. so um, one of the focus areas on the the working with existing business business retention and expansion will be to become a broker, to become a broker of information, to become a broker of connect uh, of, of of people, um, and and uh, connecting uh, business owners who always thought about um, you know I've been doing this for twenty years, thirty years, very successful, uh, but the market has changed. I always thought about wanting to export or maybe wanting to go into central Canada or connect with somebody in Europe because I hear there's a trade agreement in place. But where do I start? And uh, there are a lot of people who help, and, and, and government entities, and, and, and banks, and, and investment brokers who help and work in that part. And what we can do is broker, bring these people all together. So that's going to be one focus area. Uh, the other one will be 
We're very proud of some of the new and large investments we have attracted. Uh, Champion Food Plant, yeah. uh, for instance, uh, is a great success story, and the majority of their uh, where their product is exported uh, in, into overseas markets. So um, we have uh, a tremendous agricultural backbone in, in Parkland County and in and, and the regions uh, beyond that. And that is an opportunity because that is feedstock. That is feedstock for companies like that. So we're looking very actively and working very actively to attract more of those type uh, of companies into, into the park. Mm -hmm. um, another one is a little further to the west uh, around... Uh, uh, Stony Plain um, uh, and Highway 779, right on Highway 16, we have a, a very big uh, identified area there which, which is known or has been known as the Meridian Business Park. That is still an a area to be developed, um, but we're just in the market and working with some uh, advisors and consultants to look from a commercial viability standpoint what the next thing is we're going to do there. Could it be a big... Uh, retail play, uh, maybe, but could it be a big technology play? Maybe. Um, we're, we're open, and again, in the, in the adage of saying open for business, we're really, really driving that from a perspective of if there's a business need and a business motivation um, to develop, that is the direction we will take. Uh, I'll stop there because I, I can I can give you plenty more. There's so much you touched on and just in that that run that is so important. I mean, the big thing, collaboration, obviously, bringing those businesses together, information, super huge. You guys, <laughs> yeah, you're super diverse over there. I mean, like you're going from agriculture, talking about, like you said, Champion Pet Foods, what a great Alberta story as yep. well. And yeah, you know, those guys export all over. And you guys are attracting a lot of, um, you know, uh, outside investments as well into the into the province. Um, and new businesses, like you were saying, like you've got Freedom Cannabis up in your guys' area yep. as well. Um, just super cool stuff. So, and now going into like, uh, you know, like quote unquote, this, this downed market, um, what, are, what is the importance of this economic development push? Well, so the, the let, let me go a couple of steps back. Um, Parkland County historically has been a, a very, um, well-endowed county um, because we have uh, been blessed with uh, the, the location of major energy projects mm -hmm. in our county for, for several decades. So all of the or most of the energy that, that uh, has been you know, consumed and, and produced in Edmonton in terms of electricity was generated in Parkland County. We have the coal plants really? around the lake areas and uh, around Wabobon Lake <clears throat> on the south shore of that. And uh, due to market changes, policy changes uh, over the last several years, these coal plants are phasing out. So mm. the bottom line impact for Parkland on that is um, we know that at one point we will lose 25%, a quarter of all our revenue, of all our business. And with that, a direct job loss of about 1,600 people, which in the context of an Alberta conversation, <laughs> uh, it, it may not seem big, uh, but for a, a community or for a county like us, it's, it's uh, very impactful, and especially for the small communities mm -hmm. that are directly affected, like Keep Hills and, and others. Um, so that is the impetus uh, that is there for us to create opportunity because we have an obligation to our citizens um, to create opportunities for jobs or for investments or for, for any sort of career development. Yeah. Um, the, the second part of your question, what is important... Um, or how to go about that, uh, it is really looking, taking a step back and looking a little bit wider at things that look at it as a challenge, I guess, in a first point. If you look at them a little wider from a different perspective, there can be an opportunity as right. well. So, um, again, let me go back to agriculture. Um, the, you, we're a globalized world. And uh, manifested by, by free trade agreements and, and, and trade agreements, uh, Canada is, is actively negotiating and has actually a lot of them in place. Yep. Um, and there's a huge demand for, for food products of all kind of uh, uh, types. And just to pick one, uh, protein. Uh, uh, so so there, there's a big international drive on uh, creating more sources of plant-based protein. Uh, just to give you an example, not to you know go too far away, but um, Portage La Prairie, which is a very very little tiny town outside of Winnipeg, 
um, has attracted over $1.1 uh, $1 billion of food investment, which is basically two plans. One is a big, you know, potato type processing uh, uh, plant, and the other one is uh, a plant that uh, is um, uh, producing protein, a plant-based protein. So if, if small community, and the reason why they've attracted that is because they have the feedstock. I mean, Manitoba right. is a huge agricultural uh, powerhouse, but we have the same, and we have opportunities. So um, we're, the, the impetus is really that the change in the market, um, we're going away from coal, which is hurting us uh, on a financial side, on the revenue yeah. side, job opportunity side. Um, because the mines are closing down and some of those operations are closing down. And we're, we're, we're looking at opportunities where they exist, not necessarily in the local context of saying, what can we do in Parkland to sell to Edmonton or to Stony Plain? We've got to look bigger. Yes. Absolutely. And, and that's, that's, that's something that everybody needs to start adapting to. Yep. And, uh, and, and that innovation, like you said, the, the opportunities, the innovation, the technology, we're in Alberta, we have such a rich you know, uh, mindset here that's, that's really smart, really engaged, a great work ethic, and being able to you know, tap into that to do this kind of innovation, this yep. kind of growth is super awesome. So yep. I want to thank you so much for coming on and sharing okay. this stuff with us about Parkland County. That's been super cool. Like, again, okay. that, there's some really great things that are happening over there and more to come, obviously. Yep. You guys are doing your big push into 2020. One thing I wanted to actually touch base on really quickly was the, another primary thing that I see with your guys' location is your major routes for transportation. Yes. You're so close to the, the Yellowhead uh, Highway 16. Yeah. You've got your trains going through. You're very easily accessible by the airport. Yeah. So, I mean, that kind of into things, another massive boost for you guys. Your location is fantastic yeah. for that yeah. kind of push. So. Well, and we're taking active advantage of it. I mean, yes. the, the two airports, Villeneuve and, yeah. and, uh, and Edmonton, of course, um, we're directly at the Canamex corridor, which is Highway 60. Um, people locally don't think like that, but that is a major trade corridor. Yeah. Um, uh, again, east-west, uh, you know, direct access to Rupert. Um, uh, we have an intermodal uh, facility right in Atchison, rail spurs uh, from, from the existing rail network there and, and uh, land opportunities to build new ones. And those are the type of, of plays and investments we're actively looking at right now where people are saying, hey, do you have a big piece of land with the possibility maybe to put a rail spur on and, yeah. and to put a big you know factory of some sort on and um, absolutely, yeah. Massive so, so transportation is critical. Yeah, absolutely. Well, yeah. yeah. If you can't move the product, yeah. it's tough to have. If I can pitch, if I don't know who's watching <laughs> this, but um, pitch away. I, I will pitch away. Uh, Highway sixty um, it needs one thing to be the true Canada. Mexico corridor. It needs to be twinned. Ah, uh, we, good we're, point. We're, no, we're we're very hopeful. There's, it's almost twinned everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but there's a little piece left over the uh, rail track, right? Um, uh, right between 16 and 16A. Mm -hmm. And uh, so whoever sees this, uh, I hope it's, <laughs> it's, it's happening Pushing soon. for the twin. There you go. Good stuff. Again, thank you so much, Robert, for coming and joining us today, giving us this information. Great. And uh, yeah, we'll try and spread that out for you and uh, and get more information out to the masses and uh, hopefully bring you some investments into your uh, into your location. Yeah. Well, if, if anyone, you know, uh, would like to reach out, I mean, maybe you can share our contact information Definitely. later. And, yeah. and, and happy to uh, contact me directly. And, and we're open for business, as we said. Fantastic. Right on. Again, Thank you so much. Okay. So there you have it, folks. Parkland County and the really big importance of economic development. Um, so if you want to find out more information, we'll have all the links below in this video for that kind of contact stuff. Uh, go check it out. Do a drive out there. It's actually really cool. It's a beautiful little area. Uh, it's uh, as big as it may come across. It's very, it's very humble and it's very uh, inviting. So go and check it out. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. We've got a great musical performance for you coming up after the break. My musical guest tonight is deeply rooted in his culture, with an unfailing authenticity which accompanies his rare talent. He has won the Indigenous Artist of the Year for Western Canadian Music Awards in 2017 and Singer-Songwriter of the Year with Edmonton Music Awards 2017. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Jay Gilday performing his original, Dream Your Dreams. Is it enough to dream your dreams? Is it a hard road 
backing up in the wind when you leak into the seams. Am I dreaming? Can you see? Is it enough to write it down? Write down your philosophy, teach it to all the broken hearted people in town. Am I dreaming? Can you see? Is it enough to teach your children? How to write, how to speak, how to get along in the world when we're leaking the seams? Am I dreaming? Can you see? That was Jay Gilday. Be sure to check him out in the links below. Also, like and follow us on Facebook and be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more amazing Alberta content. See you all next Thursday at 7 p.m. Ooh, that's cold.